last week we just started talking about um, being, being territorial. We want to be territorial. One thing I'm trying to teach you, I think it's important for us to be territorial, but the thing we want to understand, if we're going to be territorial, we have to understand that the enemy is territorial. And, um, and, the, and the one thing that really, uh, the devil is, is really the only one true enemy that we have. And so that's what the Bible teaches us. And um, go to Ephesians 6, to start off with, we go to Ephesians 6, then we get to Daniel. But, uh, but, but we, we, know it, we know Ephesians 6 um, as far as what we, what, we, what we do wrestle against and what we don't wrestle against. And, um, and the Bible says in Ephesians 6, Finally, my brethren, be strong. I'm going to go over a couple of these things I went over last week, uh, but not a whole lot. This is kind of set us up for this week. Uh, but the Bible says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. I mean, that's important to be strong in the Lord. You can't just, you know, just, just a pastor by. We're going to be strong in the Lord. Um, and in the power of His might. No, don't matter how much might we have, how much, how much of God's strength do we have in us. So to be, to be strong and, and empower His might, put on the whole armor of God. We don't want to, can't just pick and choose. The whole armor of God so that you're able to stand. Everybody say stand. Stand against the wiles of the devil. That's his trickery. That's his schemes. That's what he is. Um, the Bible, we should, talking about Bible school song, you sing a song, the devil is a, a sly old fox. If I could catch him, I'd put him in a box. Come on, y'all. Okay, at least, if you're over 50, sing it with me. <laughs> Lock that box and throw away the key for all the mean things he's done for me. Let us sing. Where's my band at, man? We can go into that. He's sly. This old, old slasher, old fox. So anyway, we're dealing with this, this joker. So in verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. How many knows that? You don't wrestle against people you think you're wrestling against. I mean, they get on your, they say they get on your last nerve and, and you, you want to take them, you, you, know, you just don't want to take them out to eat and all this kind of stuff. But I'm telling you, that, that is not your enemy. But we wrestle against, remember wrestling is, a, is, is close contact. So you're in close contact with what? I'm just going to go over these first two here, just for the sake of time. Principalities and against powers. The principalities that has powers. Um, they don't say has powers, but it really that's what it's talking about, principalities. Principalities and powers are authorities. Principalities means organize. You know, principalities, if you're in government, the principalities over an area, principalities, uh, a lot of times you're talking about a county, you're talking about a state, you're talking about, re anyway, you're talking about principalities, but it, and actually the Greek word archis is used to describe things in a series, such as leaders or rulers or magistrates. Uh, so the word principality tells us that the satanic kingdom is highly organized. I mean, he's, he's, the enemy is highly organized. Uh, everything he's doing in, in the world today is highly organized. Everything he's doing on the earth today and in America today is highly organized. Everything he's doing in our, in our school system is highly organized. Everything he's doing in our government is highly organized. Everything he's doing to infiltrate the church. I, I want you to know that the devil is on a full-out assault right now to stymie the church, to stop the church. And, 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 and the way he does that is try to do it from the inside. And, and that's, he, he, the enemy generally don't work on the, from the inside. He's generally from the outside in. But he uses, uh, I won't get into it today, but he, obviously he uses us. I taught you last week that we are uh, God's enforcement agents here on this earth. We enforce everything that God has left here on this earth. Amen? We're enforcers. We enforce us. We are. He created us. So we'll look at this in a second. So the principalities are, are assigned as ruling spirits over areas such as nations, such as cities, such as homes, such as churches. And so we see these principalities. So, so, so if, if these, if these um, principalities and powers and rulers of darkness um, that, that, that's at work today are highly organized, what are they organized over? Principalities. The word um, principality is actually, the English word is actually defined as a territory or jurisdiction of a prince. Uh, that gives title or gives title to a prince. So in, in Satan's uh, kingdom, he has he has regions, and 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 obviously the Bible and teaches us, and we know it over nations, over cities, over homes, over over churches, that he he sets them over. He sets them over. The devil's not everywhere. Uh, the devil's not everywhere at the same time. He's he's at he's he's not omnipresent. Um, the Holy Spirit of God, he's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. 
Amen. He's omnipotent. What does that mean? He's got all power. He's got all power. He's omniscient. What does that mean? He knows everything. He knows everything. Well, the devil, being, a, being Lucifer, um, again, go over just a little bit of repetition from last week, that, um, that the angelic um, heavenly host was created before the foundations of the earth was. Before the foundation of the earth was even laid, before, before a tree was planted uh, and, and the galaxy, the universe was put in place and, and God threw the stars into space and told them to stay and they stayed and, and put pl 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 plants, planets into, into place and told them to spin and, and exist. Before he created all that, he created the angelic host. How many know God always will be because God always has been? Amen. Our minds can't even comprehend eternal life, uh, so eternal, eternal um, future, and, and at the same time, we can't, we can't even uh, comprehend the eternal past. Uh, amen. God always will be because God always has been. You say, well, we can't, we can't, we can't understand that. Well, that's because he's the creator, we're the createe. Amen. And so, so God, anyway, sometimes in, uh, in, in eternity past, God created, God created um, an, the angelic hosts, the celestial beings, and he gave them all a free will, a free will, just like he gave us a free will. And even though he created them and, and up, in his, up in his presence, up there in his kingdom, uh, or, or the, literally the place called the kingdom of, of God, that he gave these angels a, um, a free will, and they, they all had assignments. They all had territory. Um, even, even when God created this universe and created the heavens and the earth, he used these angelic creatures to be territorial, to give them assignments over, 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 over um, principalities, to be, be princes uh, over, over regions. Um, he, had, he was so organized that, as God's kingdom is, that we see archangels who there was, we see the, the top tier of these, or, or the three archangels was Gabriel, Michael, and Lucifer. Um, Gabriel being the messenger angel angel, um, Michael being the warrior and angel. So, so everybody under his platoon, if you will, under his unit is, is messengers. They're there for the message. So anytime you see Gabriel or see a messenger, it's all, he, he, he's over the word of God that, that comes out and comes forth uh, to men. I'll show you that in a second. Um, the next one is Michael. Michael is doing it in, in, Revela in Revelation 12 and 7. So that Michael and his angels are doing battle uh, over Satan and his angels or the devil and his angels. And he, uh, with this son about it, and they overcome them by the blood of the Lamb and the words of their testimonies. Amen. And talking about the kingdom which are over. So, so we see battle going on. Lucifer, who is the devil, who is Satan, he was over the worship. He was, how do we know he was over the worship? Because he was head of the throne room of God. And if you begin to study out, especially in the book of Revelation or all through the Bible, um, Zechariah, Ze so many different places in the Bible that are around the throne room of God, there's always worship. Amen. There's always praise. There's always giving worship and praise to God. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If they're on our, if they're on our timetable, constantly, day and night. The Bible says one angel. There's, there's, there's trillions. Our, our nation is in trillions of dollars in debt. So now we understand the word trillions. We just throw it around. Uh, but there's trillions. If there's, if, if there's more, there, there's more angels than there is debt that we have in the earth today. If you can imagine that. And the Bible says that one of those angels, if, if they just, just sung out to God, it made the pillar of the temple shake. Just one. And so that means, you know, wonder how loud it is when they all get together and they're all singing and praising unto God. So honey, if you think, if you think church is loud at highest praise, you're going to be very uncomfortable when you get to heaven. <laughs> Do you hear what I just said? Yeah, in my church, we don't sing quite that long and quite that loud. Well, we're just getting you ready for heaven. Come on, we're training for something. I said, we're training. This is, we're just pilgrims on this earth. We're not staying here. We're going, we're going to a place. We're going to a city whose builder and maker is God. And God himself rules and reigns. That's where we're going. Amen. And so anyway, so, so anyway, another story. Lucifer rebelled against God and he took one third of the angels. Can you imagine that? They, they had a choice to pick between Lucifer, the, 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 create, the createe or the creator, and show you how conniving and see how, how subtle that he is, the, the enemy. He, he got one third, one out of every three angels follow him. So that's the, that's the fallen angels. That's the territorial. So, so, so even though their, their allegiance changed, their territory didn't change. So the devil didn't have that kind of authority. Remember, he don't have any, he don't, he don't create anything. Everything he does, he uses what God creates and distorts it. Huh? He don't, he's not a creator. 
He can't, he can't put anything in you. He can't use any, he cannot put anything in you that's not already in you. But he can, he can make you, because you have authority, take what is in you and distort it and use it not for good, but use it for evil. Not use it that's going to benefit you, but to harm you. That's how he operates. He always has. And he took God's creation. So anyway, so out of these territorial spirits uh, is what over. And so, and so you, have, you have principalities over a region. I, I, I was sharing because just, just this last month, we celebrated our 25th year at Highest Praise here. And I, I, and I was sharing you even then that when we came here, one of the main things that, that we're able to do what we do here by the grace of God. But, but you have to be obedient, have to listen to God. And we came here, and even though there was people that, you know, that, that you know, we were, we were transplanted. We, 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 we just showed up here and, and like, we don't know you. You didn't come to school here and you, you know, all this kind of stuff. And so, so we had to do some battles, but the battle wasn't with flesh and blood. I realized because I read this book, it was against the principalities and powers in this region. That there's, 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 there's principalities that is put in place, delegated authority on assignment by Satan himself. Because remember, I told you, Satan is not omnipresent. He can't be everywhere at the same time. The presence of Satan is, is somewhere in the earth today. Can you imagine that? And, and the chances that you do in battle with him is slim and none. But the chances you would have to do battle with one of his, his, his demonic foes that are on assignment is, is who you deal with on a constant basis. And so we understand when we got here, what, what is it that is holding up? What is it that God wants to do something strong? God wants to do something powerful. God wants to do something mighty in the earth today. And he's going to use, he's going to use this church. He's going to use this place. He's going to use this body of believers to do it. And so I begin to understand that, 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 that God doesn't want to stop it, that there's a kingdom who wants to stop the kingdom of God. Because there's only two kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. That's it. And we begin to understand and try to try to figure out. I taught you that last week. Some of the things that we had to deal with, and uh, in the spiritual realm that we had to overcome, that we had to do battle against. And uh, but but how many know the greater is He that is in us than He that is in the world? The Bible says that that God has sent us, and so so we begin to see things begin to begin to, to fall down. We begin to see that uh, the, the 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 plans of the enemy begin to be overcome because that's what God, wherever, wherever the, the spirit, whenever the enemy comes in like a flood, God always lifts up a standard against it. Amen. So anyway, so let's go to Daniel. I kind of get you caught up a little bit. I'm going to go to Daniel. I want to show you a, a territorial spirit here in the Old Testament. Um, and, and here in the Old Testament, show you how some of these guys work. Obviously, they're over nations, they're over cities, they're over homes. And obviously, next month, we're going to start uh, talking about parenting. We're going to get into school starts back, believe it or not. By next month, this time, we'll be uh, get, getting back in school. And so, I want to prepare you, want to get you ready and uh, uh, with your house and with your schools, with, with, your, with, with everything we, we're doing. Because as your house goes, so did this house go. Amen. And so um, we want to not only tell you about what the enemy is doing over, over this nation and what he wants to do in the earth today, but I want, I want you to have an understanding of what he's trying to do in your house, what he wants to do to your marriage, what he wants to do to your finances, what he wants to do with your children, what he wants to do with your joy, what he wants to do with your peace, and show you that, that, that you have power over all the power of the enemy. Amen. Anyway, so let's roll. So, so here, let me, let me show you a, a chief uh, principality here. This is Daniel chapter 10, verse 3. And Daniel says, I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth. Remember, Daniel is in captivity. Altogether, it ended up going to be 70 years of captivity. That whenever they were in Israel, the Babylonians, the Babylonians came. We know the story. If you don't, the Babylonians came and overtook, overtook Judah overtook the Syrians, that already took Israel, and now the tribe of Judah was there, which Daniel was a part, and now the Babylonians have been overtaken by the Persians, but the, but, but the Syrians have, have overtook them, and now the Babylonians, the nation of Babylon, comes in and overtakes, brings in the children of Israel um, there into Babylon, and then the, if you remember your history books, and then the next, the, the fourth great power came along with the media Persians. The Persians came in, and they, they overtook, they overtook 
overtook the Babylonians. And so, um, so that was going on. And so that was Belshazzar, the, the, king of, the king of Babylon at the time, wanted Daniel, wanted Daniel to um, you know, eat the king's food. He wouldn't. We know about the fire furnace and everything went on with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We know all those stories. And so now here's Daniel because he knew that God had a plan because the children of Israel is not living in the land of Israel. They're living in the, in the land of Babylon, in the land of Persia, which is Iran and Iraq of today. Um, Iran is Persia. You go to Iran today and, and, and you call them Iranians, they're going to look at you. They're Persians. They'll tell you they're Persians. They're Persians. So we see here in Persia. And so it's very important we understand that just like Babylon we know is Iraq, is modern day Iraq. So we see these areas flip flopping here where Babylon now Persia is taking place. Um, so anyway, so here's under the rule of Persia. And so now, um, but Daniel wants to go back to Israel. He wants to go back to Jerusalem. And he's praying and asking God for an answer. God, what are you going to do with our people? When are you going to set us free? And he's praying. So that's where we pick up at. And he says in verse 3, I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all. For three whole weeks were fulfilled. That's 21 days. This is the Daniel fast. A lot of times we talk about the Daniel fast. This is 21 days, and Daniel not, is not eating. He, he's fasting. He's fasting because he wants an answer from God. Amen. For 21 days. Verse 4, now on the 24th day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, that is the, the Tigris River, I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was girded with gold of upaz. His body was like burrow, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire, his arms and feet like burnished bronze in color, and the sound of his words like the voice of mighty a multitude. Hey, man, this joker didn't come from Calabash. This joker right here is from somewhere else. I mean, this is a bad dude right here. I mean, just fire and, 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 and just, just gold and just shiny face. I mean, this guy's from, from the kingdom of heaven. Um, and I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me did not see the vision, didn't see this, this angel. What is it? It's an angel. So an angel shows up. Let me know there's things you can do to cause an angel to show up. Mm, got quiet in this Presbyterian church, but that's okay. We're going to get you through it. I said there's things you can do that you begin to start seeing in the spiritual realm. So you don't fight the devil in the natural realm. You fight the devil in the spiritual realm. That's what the whole Ephesians 6 is. What we're dealing with in America today, the whole, the whole pride agenda, the whole woke agenda, the whole, the whole abortion agenda. We can go on and on and on about all this. This is, this is, this is not flesh and blood. These are, these, are principi these are territorial spirits on assignment from Satan himself. Yes. You understand that? It's about time for us to go in our houses when we realize joy is not there and peace is not there and our, and our teenagers are rebellious and, our, and you don't love your husband like you used to and, 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 and the husband is looking at the, the, the secretary looks better than what she used to and all these things begin to happen. You better wake up and understand that evil forces are at work right now. And the Bible says he comes but to do a couple of things, kill, steal, and destroy. And he'll take you out if you sit back and do nothing. But if you hear this preacher this morning and rise up and realize who is in you and what power you have, you can drive him out. And what he wanted to do, he could not do because God is on your side. Amen. And so here's Daniel. He's praying. He's, he's seeking the face of God. And, and an angel shows up. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, he had to fast 21 days for an angel to show up. Honey, sometimes if you, when you want it bad enough, you do whatever it takes. You'll pray no matter how long you got to pray. If your family is in trouble, how many days is enough? And how many is too much? How much prayer do I got to do? How many church service I got to go to? How much Bible reading I got to do? How much TV I got to cut off? How much social media have I got to come off of to see a move of God and see God begin to show up? <clears throat> Bible says, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. We want his enemies to be scattered, but we don't want God to arise. But if you want the enemies to be scattered, then you got to go first. My goodness, I didn't get here that way, but it come back to me again. I told the first service, just so you know I'm not picking on you. I told them that if we're going to serve God, then let's serve God. If you're going to serve God, you got to serve him like he is the only God. 
because that's what God is. He's, he is God. He's not a multitude of God. He's God. Amen. He's not a God. He's the God. Who is he? He's Elohim. He's El Shaddai. He's the almighty God. That's who he is. And, and one of the things that come from these principalities that comes over our nations, comes over our churches and get into our homes is a, is a spirit of religion. Yep. Yep. Honey, you can carry a Bible 10 pounds if you want to. You can do, you, you can dress up, you can, you can do whatever, but, but you're just as religious, which means you're just as stuck, which means that that you have the word, but you have no spirit. Hmm? Let me teach you something. You do this one first. The spirit without the word is emotionalism. Oh, we just feel good. We just want we going to all do all this kind of stuff. Why you doing? I don't know. We just don't know it. We operate because it's what the word says. <clears throat> Just like the word without the spirit is dead legalism. Well, this is what the word of God says, and this is what you're supposed to do. No spirit behind it. It's dead. But honey, when you put the spirit, come on church, when you put the spirit with the word, then it comes alive and is active. And we realize that, that, that and, and, re, and religion says, no, you got to do it this way, this way, this way, and this way. Honey, all I'm doing is I'm after God and however he wants to get it to me and however he wants me to respond and however he wants me to act, if that's what I got to do to get it, then bless God, I want it. No, I want it, but I want to act this way. What if he says he's going to throw you in the floor, you're going to cry, and you're going to laugh until your side hurts, but you're going to get it. No, I ain't doing that. Okay. <laughs> That's called religion. There's limits. There's the law there. There's a limit. But honey, when God comes in and shows up, there is no limits. I said there is no limits. God, I want you to have your way. That's why we just started singing that song a while ago. Just, just have your way. God, a revival. You want a revival, honey? It's not going to change some things. It's going to change everything in your house. Anyway, that's how I feel like we should serve God. We should serve God like he's the only true and living God. We should serve God like he's alive. I said we should serve him like he's alive, not just on a, not because you go to a, a loud, charismatic church. You should serve God because you, he's just as alive Monday at 2 o'clock as he is Sunday at 11.45 a.m. He's alive. And, and if he's not alive, then, then quit serving him. If you're not going to wake up every day and say you're just as much God on Tuesday as you are on Wednesday night at church, then God, then let's just quit. Mm. Social media is after the name. Pastor Lancaster has finally said it. Just quit. <laughs> well, honey, if we ain't going to treat him like he is, if we're not going to worship him like he is, if we're not going to bait him like he is, then everything we're doing is for naught. We might as well, I told first service, they looked at me, you know, like an old cow looking at a new gate. <laughs> and it happens a lot. I'm not picking on just how to look at them. I said, if you don't want to serve God that way, then go serve Buddha. Go serve, go serve Muhammad. That's what they did. Got quiet. Why? Because Buddha's dead. Muhammad's dead. But we serve the only God that says he was dead. <laughs> I am the resurrection. I am the life. Though I was dead, yet shall ye live. And whosoever liveth and believeth on me shall never die. Yeah. And what it says? That, honey, I think now that shock has come off of you. So I think we ought to live that way. Yeah. I think you ought to get up in the morning and brush your teeth that way. I think you need to send your kids off to school the next couple of weeks that way. That greater is he that is in a, that we is, he is the resurrection and he is alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Hey, and no song says you ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. And we should pray that way. 
We should sing that way. We should raise our children that way. We should go to church that way. Amen. Okay. I'm an equal opportunity pastor, so if I gave it to one, I'm going to give it to the other one. So, so the angel shows up. Boy, this is, this is living stuff. And he said, I heard the sound of his words. I'm in verse 9. The sound of his words, and I was in a deep sleep in my face with my face to the ground. Well, what happened? Something from heaven showed up. Well, I just don't believe in all that manifestation stuff. Well, honey, he fell on his face. I learned that when I was a kid. That's called falling out in the spirit. Oh, boy, just laid out. In the Old Testament. Why? Because <laughs> being from another world came in there. An angel sent by God, full of the holy glory of God all surround about him. And when he showed up, your fleshly, your old fleshly, flesh and blood, bone body, made as an earth suit to walk upon this people planet, can't handle the presence of God. People, boy, I got to get off of this. I'm on territory spirits. I'm talking about falling out in the spirit. God help me. And there's the piano player. <sighs> what was I saying? Oh, falling out in the spirit. I was only on that. Because, <laughs> honey, when the presence of God gets upon you in a tense way, this old flesh and blood man just gives way to him. And you just don't even care. You just want more of it than you do you. Come on, somebody. Could you get up? Probably can. But guess what? You don't want to. You want, I, I told, what, what did Finney say? He says, he says, Lord, he said he prayed one time, Lord, lift your hands off me, lest I die. How many has ever said that prayer? God, I can't function. I can't eat. I can't, I can't get up and go to work. I, I can't, can't cut my grass. I can't, I can't close the children. Why? Because your presence is so heavy. Your presence is so hard on me. I don't know about you. I've never had to pray that prayer, but I would love to pray that prayer. God, I got to pastor this church. I, we, we got a school to get ready for, God. We, we got Wednesday night meetings to have. It's come from Wednesday, God. I feel like I love your presence, God, but I got to get up off this floor. Good stuff. I said, good stuff. And here's Daniel fasted and prayed for 21 days for his country. Not just because he didn't get the house he wanted. Not because he thought he had more likes from his post on Facebook, Facebook, whatever you call it. He's praying. For a nation that's in bondage. Come on, church. God, are you going to set us free or not? God, are you going to do it or not? And why he's praying, not the first day, not the second, three weeks later, an angel shows up. Oh, hallelujah. How long's too long? Nothing is too long. You don't remember the length of it? All you remember is he showed up. Come on, church. I've talked to mamas and daddies who pray for prodigals. And when they come home, they didn't, they didn't sit there and celebrate the 17 years it took them to pray them in. They just celebrate the day that they came home. Huh? Don't let the element of, to listen to this, don't let the element of time rob you from the blessings of God. He's got it. He's got it. Anyway, I'm trying to tell you about this angel. He hit the floor. <laughs> so the hand touched me and made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O oh, Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand that the words I speak to you and sh stand straight up. Boy, the presence got him up. For I have now been sent to you. While, while you were speaking this word to me, 
while he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. You know what we need today in the church? We need a move of God that calls us to tremble. Calls us to rethink this thing. Maybe we don't have church figured out. Maybe we don't have Sunday morning figured out. Maybe we don't have revival figured out. Maybe we don't have praise and worship figured out. Maybe we need to hear from God again and say, God, what is it exactly do we need to do for you to do something in the earth today? Because we think we got it all figured out. We're smart. We got people in buildings. Stood trembling. And he said to me, do not fear. Well, <laughs> the Bible's a funny book. What do you think he said, do not fear? Because he knew the awesome presence he was in was causing that old flesh and blood and bone body to fear. It's all good, Daniel. I'm on your side. Amen. Well, don't tell me God can't do something that causes, man, we got to get out of the flesh and get in the spirit because in the, in, the, in the flesh realm, this will petrify us. But this is from God. He said, do not fear, Daniel, from the first day. From the first day. How many days did he pray and fast? He said, on the first day that you started praying, that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your word. The first day, the first meal he pushed back and said, oh God, I need understanding on how to lead these people. God dispersed an angel. The angel's not... The angel's not, the angel's not coming with the word. The angel is protecting the word. It's just what Gabriel's angelic host does, protects the word of God. And he shows up. Okay, well, why? And I got time to preach on why it takes sometimes long for God to answer the prayer. But we do know this, verse 13. What hindered him? A principality that was over Persia. A, a satanic delegated authority from Satan himself that is placed over the region of Persia. And from the first day that that, that the angel came from the throne of God comes through that, that prince of Persia on, his, on, on assignment with Satan over that territory that was placed there by God before he rebelled. And there that angel and that prince of Persia is battling and they're fighting. What's he fighting? To hold back what God's word is coming forth with. And that angel is coming with assignment. And they're doing battle in the heavens. And the more battle they're doing, the more praying Daniel's doing. Daniel's praying and they're battling. Daniel, third day didn't do it. The fourth day didn't do it. The fifth day, no. we find out later that then Michael now is sent in dispatch. And now you got Michael because for every one fallen angel, there's two of God's angels. And there's battle going on in the heavenly realms. I'm here to tell you there's battle going on in the heavenly realms over America right now. There's battle going on in the heavenly realms over cities right now. There's battles going on in the heavenly realms over churches right now. There's battle going on in the heavenly realms over your home right now. Battle. While you sit in a padded chair, heaven and hell is clashing and colliding over what? Over your destiny and over the souls of your children and your children, children. The Bible says in Hebrews are not angels ministering, angels ministering spirits calling off to minister on behalf of the heirs of salvation. As soon as you get saved, guess what? You now got authority. That's why David says in Psalm 23, surely his goodness and his mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
deliver. What's keeping my prayer? What's keeping my way of living? Uh -uh. His goodness and his mercy. You know who I think goodness and mercy is to him? I believe it's a 12 foot tall angel that looks about like the one that Daniel saw. And everywhere he went, the goodness and mercy of God is with us every step in the way. We're going to do it. We're going to have it. Why? Because God is good and God is full of mercy. And as long as we hang on to him, his goodness and his mercy we be with us every step of the way. Amen. Amen. And he battled them. Verse 13. And Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me and left me alone there. Boy, that's, that's the air of salt. You got about five more minutes? Okay, yeah. The door's locked. Anyway, you can't get it. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Pastor Lancaster has locked them in. Matthew 8. I didn't do this first service. God dealt with me. He says, you, you didn't do the I wanted you to do it. I said, okay. Well, I got another one. <clears throat> Hallelujah. He's the prince of the power of the air. That's the air assault. That's the, that's the air force. <laughs> oh, there's a Tanner Ram dealing up there. That's why the Bible says that the weapons of warfare are not, mine, are, are, are not carnal, but they're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and bringing every thought captive into the knowledge of God. He's dealing with us in here. Just atmospheres. Go to a foreign country, go to another city, go somewhere, and you just consent. I remember when I got off the plane in, in L.A. one time, and I was like, what is that? It's just some, the atmosphere was different. Went down to Hollywood. Ah, it was different. Walked in a restaurant. Jenna was about three or four years old. Jordan was two years older, so I had six or seven, whatever, six and four, whatever. And I walked in that restaurant, we said, a little pizza place. We were sitting there, I thought, this ain't right. One of the most spiritual, sensitive times in my life. It's when God was dealing me concerning what was next. We've been youth pastors, been assistant pastors, been evangelists. I knew God was going to do something. You have seasons that you're so much more sensitive than others. You just, and boy, that was a sensitive time. And I walked in there and I was like, man, something ain't right. Pizza smells good, but something ain't right. And looked over, I went to look over there and there was, there was a witch. What, you have a big hat and run around the broom? No, you just look at her, she was a witch. And I said, I thought, man, there's a present here. I looked over there and where Jenna was sitting, was my, I mentioned Jenna, never forget we were sitting with her. And, and that chick was sitting there the whole time and, was, and I could tell her eyes was locked on her just like this. Now, most of y'all would have grabbed a kid and took off running, not me. Remember I told you pizza smelled good? No, I'm eating me some pizza. You ain't robbing me of this. I just move and I turn around, I look to make sure that she knew I was real, and I sit down right in front of her. I'm just telling you, I forgot why I told you that, but anyway. Sometimes you're dealing with them not in the unseen realm. Sometimes you see them in the seen realm. There it is. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes you don't need discernment because you can't see it. Sometimes you see it. Sometimes you hear it. You got to say, no, I got to read this. So we just talked about the Air Force. Let's talk about the foot soldiers. While Jesus had come to the other side of the country of Gadaris, there met him two demon-possessed men. Bless Jesus' heart. He just got through dealing with a bunch of Pharisees on one side, got on the boat, went across a big old wave. He had to calm the waves and seas. He finally gets to the other side, and as soon as he gets off, you know, he's trying to walk. Here comes two demon-possessed men running towards him. <laughs> My man can't get a break. Thing won't take long. Give me a minute. Or two. They come running to him. 
They come running him, two demon-possessed men come out of the tomb, sleeping fierce that no one could pass by. They were so fierce that no one could pass by that way. They had intimidated people. They had ownership over that place. See, wherever these demons come, wherever they show up at, they get territorial. That's why they want countries. That's why they want cities. That's why they want, they want churches. They want homes. They come in and they get territorial and they, they make ownership there. That's why if you let the enemy hang around in your house, he'll set up camp in there and he'll stay and he'll use it as his own. And instead of you controlling him, he controls you. And the standard that used to be up here is now down there. I need another hour. These foot soldiers, if you will, now possessing this, possession means ownership, owns these vessels. Come run to Jesus. And suddenly they cried out saying, this is where it gets, here's where we come into. Look what they told Jesus. What have we to do with you? These are the demons talking. They come up to Jesus. What have we to do with you, comma, Jesus? These are devils, man, on assignment from Satan himself. And they know Jesus by his name. There's church people wouldn't even recognize Jesus if he walked through this door. And demons, oh, it's Jesus. What, we, what have we to do with you, Jesus? You're the son of God. It's like a good preacher, doesn't it? You're Jesus, the son of God. Why is they saying that? Because if he's the son of God, he has power being the Son of God, but he has no authority on this earth because God in Genesis 1, 27, 28 says, Behold, let's give authority over man. That's why you can't deal with the devil in the fleshly realm or the natural realm. You got to deal with him in the spiritual realm, right? Well, he can't deal with you in the spiritual realm because you're not spirit. He has to deal with you in the natural realm. So he needs your body. He needs your mind. He needs your mouth because we have the right we have the power we have the authority but here Jesus showing up and says we remember you you're the son of God in other words they weren't very bright demons even though they knew who he was but they did they forgot the fact that Jesus didn't just drop in here on a cloud he came in through the door what's the door he was birthed into this he, he was birthed he was he was the son of God and he was a son of man right his mother was Mary this sinless woman that God chose but his daddy was was God the father himself conceived by the Holy Spirit he was very much God and very much man. What does that mean? He had to be God because he had to be the sinless lamb of God that was qualified to take away the sins of the world because that's what Levitical law says. But he also had to be a man. He also had to walk in the authority that God gave man. So they're saying, we know who you are. You're Jesus. You're the son of God. You got power and authority up in heaven, but you have none here on earth. You gave it to man. That's why we're possessing two of them right now. And Jesus sitting there with his flesh, blood, and bone body, but at the same time full through his veins was not Joseph's blood, but Elohim's blood. Oh, come on, somebody. What's he doing? What's he doing? He's showing us how we're supposed to act. He's showing us what we have. We are sons of men because we got mamas and daddies and we got a birth certificate. But we're also children of the Most High God because we got another birth certificate. It's the day we got born again and now flowing through my veins. It's not only my daddy's blood, but my father's blood, which is in heaven. So we don't have just power. We got authority. We got the right. We got the right to do what? 
I don't care what kind of prince you are. I don't care what your agenda is. I don't care if, if because the Bible says in Isaiah, even the law for captive must be set free. I understand we live that way. I understand that our children are a byproduct of us saying no to God and playing games with this stuff. But as for me and my house for this day forward, we're going to serve God. And being the fact I'm the son of man and I'm a child of living God, I'm here to tell you, rebellious devil, you got to go. I'm here to tell you, divorced devil, you got to go. I'm here to tell you, suicidal spirit, you got to go right now in Jesus' name. I'm here to tell that homosexual devil, you got to go right now in Jesus' name. That fornication devil, you got to go right now. That adulterous devil, you got that addiction devil, you got to go right now in Jesus' name. you learn that from? Put my scripture back up there. We know who you are. Have you come to torment us before our time? Let me tell you something. This is still the church age. Since Acts 2, we know we don't know when it ends, but, but soon and very soon, Jesus is going to come back. And when Jesus comes back, he's going to take the church away. It's called the rapture. And Satan's kingdom has seven years. Listen to me. He's got seven years for his kingdom to rule and reign right here on this earth. And his man, his Messiah, the Antichrist, whoever that joker is, is going to rule and reign for seven years. He's got seven years. And then Jesus is going to come back, Revelation 19, and do away with the whole thing. And that's what they're saying. Why? You... You come here to torment us before the time. We ain't had time. We ain't had our time yet. Guess what? I realize what wokeism is doing. I understand what theology is doing. I understand what under, underneath that is the, ho the homosexual agenda, the, the identity agenda, the abortion agenda, the, the, the get God out of the, 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 the equality agenda, the, the coexist agenda. I can go on and on and on. But don't forget this church. It's not the time for Satan's kingdom to rule and reign. This is still the church age. This is still the kingdom of our God. We are still in control. We still have power. We still have authority. Don't fear because it looks like we're losing. We can't lose. This is not Satan's kingdom's time. It's the church time. It's still our time. It's our time. Rob me of my time. Join us is my time. He can't do whatever he wants to do. He can't act however he wants to act. We still have authority and power because the kingdom of heaven is at hand and it's being enforced by you. That means you don't have to put up with nothing. <sighs> Boy, I'm telling you, we're, pl we're just busting through. Oh, man. Okay, we got to close on this. I got to. Y'all getting this? If you don't want it, don't worry about it. But if you do, just get your spiritual straw and just... <sighs> Verse 30, now a good way off from them, there was a herd of many swine. <laughs> you know what swine is? Pigs. Now here's, here's we see the foot soldiers now on ground. Now we see a bunch of swine over there. And, and, and the demons beg Jesus, if you cast us out, allow us to go to the herd of swine. There's a thousand sermons on that, but the bottom line is, since I'm talking about territory, the whole problem is they want nobody else around there, but they knew that they want, their, their authority was in that region. And the, and the pigs was in that region, was right over there. You can cast us out of these two fellas, in which we know you're going to do that, but when you do, don't, don't throw us out of this region because we have no authority in the other region but this region. Allow us to go in those pigs. Is nobody with me? In 
that Jesus had to do a Jericho march, had to scream and holler, had to roll around the floor, had to uh, go get the right anointing oil that was full in from Jerusalem and go around and anoint the house, and then the enemy began to shake and shut away. Uh-uh. The Bible says, and Jesus says, go! I want that. You want what? I want that. You want what? That. I want to be able to walk in this sanctuary on a Saturday and I feel like, oh, we're not ready for Sunday morning. I'm not talking about the man's not ready and my media's not ready and my usher's not ready. Uh, we ain't ready for something here. And I'm not walking. I don't have to spend. Come on, I'm going to be here for two hours. Uh, I'm going to walk through that door. If it's not right, I'm going to say, go. And we're, I want to walk in my house and something's not right. And I'm walking, uh, uh, I don't like this. Uh, go. Uh, I, don't want to, I want to go on my job and, and realize something ain't right. There's an evil force against me. And we say, go. Can we do it? You better believe we can do it because Jesus is our example and that's how we're supposed to operate. Stand on your feet. We got to get out of here. Right? A.W. Tozer says, I don't have it, but I want it. I write that stuff. It's my favorite quote of him. I don't have it, but I want it. I don't have it. You know what's happened to the church? We don't have it, so we give up. We don't have it, so we roll over. We don't have it, so we quit. But the but Tozer says, uh, we need to pray. God, I don't have it, but I want it. I've been telling the enemy to get off my child, and he has it. I've been telling the devil to get off of my marriage, and he has it. I've been telling the devil to get away from my church, and he has it. If you don't have it, still want it. And I'm telling you, just keep on doing it until you get it. Amen. Let's be rest. I didn't finish the first service either. I'm going to finish. And he said to them, go. So they went. So when they had come out, they went to the herd of swine. And suddenly the whole, the whole herd of swine ran violently down the steep place into the sea. And, they, and all the hogs perished in the water. You know what that's called, right? Suicide. <laughs> well, y'all laughing better than Wally. Yeah, got it out, y'all. Y'all more weight than the first day. Like. <laughs> pigs are suey, pig suey. <laughs> and right, Ryan, Ryan's Arkansas boy. What y'all, pig suey, right? Pig suey. <laughs> I mean, they jumped off to their death. Anyway. And those who kept the pigs fled. The owners of the pigs fled and they went away into the city and told everything. The owners of the pigs. Estimate, I did a, I did a study one time. The, the, the hogs that died that day was equivalent to a half a million dollars worth of, worth of pigs, pork, <laughs> hogs. Now I'm from Wayne County. How do you know you're from Wayne County? Just roll the window down, baby. You can smell it. You ain't know, I'm in Wayne County. When you first enter in, you smell the pigs. Then you get into Wayne County good, you smell the cook pig. <laughs> I'm not talking about a little Boston butt you put in the oven. And you got, uh, I'm talking about you go to a pit behind some restaurant somewhere. They got a bunch of oak logs on under there, and they got the whole carcass of the brother laying on the laying on the rack. It's like God, if you can bless this pork, cause this is good. Anyway. There's a lot of money in it. Five hundred thousand dollars worth is what is what one commentary says. And they got they left. And they went away to the city and told everything, including what had happened to the demon possessed men. These men were so demon possessed they were living in the graveyard and they're set free. And the next next paragraph should be and revival broke out. And tens of thousands of people began to come and fall at the feet of Jesus. Look what happens when you start messing with people's money. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus. Sounds good so far. And when they saw him, they begged him to depart from their region. 
You didn't know that, did you? God's moving, doing great things. But they don't like the way he's doing it. So go somewhere else. I'm here to tell you, God, I don't care how you do it. Just move right here in the corner of 17 and Red Bug. We want to see it. Amen. Come on, throw your hands up right now. I'm going to bless you. We've got to get up here. Father, right now, I thank you, Lord, for your word today. We have heard your word, God, and we receive your word, God, and we're going to apply your word right now through our life. God, I'm asking you now, Lord, that God, every heart, God, every every so every ear, God, has heard today, Lord, give us authority, God. We know you're giving it to us, God. May we receive it, Lord. Father, may we be like Jesus, Lord. May we walk like him. May we talk like him. May we operate in authority like him. May we operate in the power in him, God. And Father, whoever, whatever family, whatever home, God, God, whatever is dealing with something, God, I pray to God that we will have the power. We get to the level that we tell them to go and it's got to go right now. We bind those spirits right now. We bind the enemy not now, God. We bind the adversary right now, and we tell it to go in Jesus' name. We ask for thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Lord. We pray that prayer today, God, and we ask you, Holy Spirit of God, rest over us, Lord, and may we walk in the power and the strength of your might. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and magnify the Lord with me. Amen. I just pledge if you need prayer, individual prayer, I got prayer workers up here that would love to pray with you. Don't leave here if you need prayer today. We love to pray with you up here in the front, okay? You've probably heard us mention the Church Center app a few times now. This app helps you sign up for events, join groups, you can give, serve, and so much more. To download it, you can scan the QR code on the screen or search for Church Center in your app store. Because of your prayers and generosity, our new middle school and high school building is open and in use. Southeastern Christian Academy is an open enrollment. If you have pre-K through 12th grade, you can enroll them anytime at sechalot.org. If you're a parent here, we want to let you know a way to connect to us. We have a parent connection group. You can join it anytime. You can comment, you can share things, you can conversate with us, and we talk about everything going on in our kids' and students' lives every single week. Make sure you sign up on that today. We are so glad to have you today. We are confident that in Jesus, you will find a home. If this is your first time joining us, please say hi. Text welcome to 910-501-2005. You can scan the code on the front of your seat or stop by our welcome tent on your way out. We would love to get to know you, give you a t-shirt even as a free gift. Highest praise, we love you. We cannot wait to see what God does in and through you each and every week.